Oh. Hi. Oh my god. Oh god, it's been a while. Yeah. Yeah, since what, Batman? Uh, since Batman. That was a... And that was a while before that, too. A long while before that, yeah. Yeah, Gabe, what's up? You're keeping, you're keeping us waiting. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Yeah, here we are. We're in here in a in a great day too. Four twenty. Uh, we have four twenty. Yeah, we're recording this on four twenty. Mm-hmm. Yep. I have no idea how long this one is gonna go, but you know what? I do not care. So, as you can see by the title, we are going to be doing a quick round. Well, not necessarily quick, but just a general roundup of the movies we've missed talking about since uh, twenty twenty two. As of the record, we've only done one section in 2022 that of the batman so we're gonna cover all the other stuff that we didn't get to talk about yeah and for mind uh for minders some of these we both saw some of these it was just one of us that saw yeah so, folks i i haven't seen much this year so yeah i've seen more but <clears throat> yeah excuse me uh, yeah so without further ado let's get right into it Get right, let's get right into it, yeah. All right, well, first things first, let me actually uh, get something up on screen for me. Actually, you know what? While we're talking about it, yeah, let's go for it. Scream is the No, first. I did not see this one. You did not see this one. I sure did. And this was the first movie of 2022 I saw. Oh, my God. This is the first one. Uh, it was the first movie that came out this year that I was interested in. And, um, yeah, it was perfectly okay. If anybody who doesn't know anything about me, which would be a lot of you, uh, I've only seen two Scream movies. I saw the original and I saw Scream 4. Mm. So, and the best one, Scary Movie. Uh, mm. so, Forget about that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Scream is not necessarily one of my favorite franchises. I don't have too much attachment to it. I I know about it, you know, and how influential of a franchise it was. Horror-wise, you know, Wes Craven and all. May he rest in peace. This is the first film he didn't direct uh, in this franchise. So, you know, there was a lot to kind of, I guess, uh, expect for Scream fans. And uh, this comes to us from the directors of Ready or Not, which you yourself, I know, Ernest, you do not. You do not enjoy that film. Could have been better. Maybe so. I haven't seen it in a while. But, um, mm. I remember enjoying it just fine. thought it was okay. But, um... Just like better than Ready or Not? I wouldn't know. Because... Oh. I mean, it depends on what you kind of expected from Ready or Not. If you expected some kind of, like, subversive film, you're oh. not getting anything different from Scream. Um... But I kind of went in was hoping for some good, uh, some good meta commentary, some exciting kills, some decent characters, and I got uh, enough of that. I think uh, the writing was particularly sloppy with the um, twists and some of the meta commentary. While the original four screen films focused on the kind of rules of the slasher genre and the general horror genre. This film is specifically parodying or uh, speaking on what they call requels, uh, which is a reboot sequel. So they give examples like the recent Star Wars trilogy, Jurassic World, Halloween 2018, um, those kind of you know movies, introducing new characters while also bringing old characters back in a long-running franchise when you know you've gone bankrupt creatively. Um, and of course, this film does those same, you know, uh, cliches. Screams. Look, guys, I know we're making fun of this, these old tropes, but listen, we're not like them. We're, we're different because we're making fun of them, all right? Uh, the problem is, is that Scream has never been one to not do that. Scream has always, mm -hmm. we're going to poke fun at it while also doing it. Exactly. So don't expect Scream 5, which has just been called Scream, uh, I don't know why they didn't call it Scream 5. I, I, guess, to do that. That, 
I guess that just kind of works in with the joke, I guess. But um, I appreciated some of that commentary. I thought it was fun. They made some pretty funny jokes out of it. Um, but the eventual twist that it leads to, which do you care if I spoil? No, I don't. Um, it leads to the big twist being that because in the in the Scream universe and Scream franchise, there is an in-universe film um, about the murders that happened in uh -huh. each Scream movie. Uh, right. I think they're called Stab. And I think in Scream 5, they're up to like Stab 8 or Stab 12. And so... Plot twist. It's just, it's just a scary movie. Hmm. So um, in this film, the killers, because there's always two, the killers are two fans, toxic fans of the Stab franchise who think it's gone to shit and would like to bring it back to its classic roots. Former glory, bro. And so you have uh, Jack Quaid, who's the uh, kind of he has. A, I think one of the direct lines is, "How can a fandom be toxic?" Um, and it's it's essentially like a commentary about how like there are people that get incredibly attached to things and franchises, but they can also go too far. And in this case, they're literally murdering people mm. and killing people because they want to inspire the next stab movie to be better and so they're creating a change of serial killings including killing off uh one of the main characters dewey one of the legacy oh characters from the franchise because oh my dude they're making, they're making fun of us because quote um this movie will have stakes by killing an old character quote that is an actual quote in the line they kill dewey because this movie will now have stakes i guess I guess it worked, I guess. Uh, the twist ends up becoming something that's more expository. It's like a maybe five-minute scene of just the characters kind of preaching, explaining themselves, and telling you everything. It's right. It kind of takes away from the tension of the final act. And a lot of the movies like this, they spend a lot of time making jokes and uh, doing weirdly set-up scares and kind of plenty of dumb moments. Um, and that's where the movie kind of gets sloppy, is in yeah, some of that execution. Yeah. But what it what it has is it is a mixed bag. That, you know, there is plenty good about it. The performances are all good around. Um, I liked it, the character Dewey. And despite them Han soloing him, um, I thought they give that I thought they gave the character dignity in the way he went out. Unlike Han Solo. Unlike Han Solo, I guess. Um. Yeah, they, they, they definitely tried harder with that character, but there's uh, the main character of the film is a character named Sam oh. by Melissa Barrera, played by Mel Melissa Barrera, and she's revealed to be the daughter of the killer from the first Scream. All right. And they try to do something where, like, because she's she sees, she has hallucinations of her father, who she would have never met. Uh, yeah. Um, but because he was a killer, a famous killer, you know, she, I guess she just kind of sees him and hears him. I guess, I guess she does. Um, and I guess However, there's that like this weird, uh, apparently it's medically induced. It, there's like this weird idea that, that I don't understand what the movie was fully going for, where at the end of the film, it's like this kind of push for her to embrace her serial killer aspects where she viciously murders Jack Quaid at the end of the movie. And I would well, understand it if the film had kind of set that up, but they never once tried to make you believe that she could uh, kill anybody. So a payoff without a setup. It's a payoff without a setup. Maybe it's something I missed in the movie. Maybe I have to watch it again and kind of uh, see what they were going for. Um, rewatchable? It, it definitely is rewatchable. It's not a. It's not an unwatchable movie by any means. It's just there's for amount of good and decent stuff you're getting throughout the movie. There's about an equal opportunity amount of dumb shit that you have to sit through. Sounds like it could be a better time with friends. Probably is. Probably better with somebody who knows the scream scream franchise better than I. Um, that being said, there is some great gore. There's one scene Ooh. that actually genuinely tends to be up. It's a scene in a kitchen. Um, that really, that actually really got me tensed up. 
Um, otherwise, yeah, it's, it's a perfectly a okay slasher film that I have no problem rewatching again. Nothing offensive. Nothing offensive. Right? Nothing offensive. I've seen some Scream fans call it the last Jedi of Scream movies, and for me, that just made me laugh out loud because there's a really, there's a really good um, dig at uh, Ryan Johnson in the movie. Mm. Um, there's a line where they talk about how one of the stab movies was made by the Ryan, the Knives Out director. And one of the characters says, I like that movie. And another character who's supposed to be like uh, kind of this big movie buff goes, of course you like that movie, you fucking idiot. Everyone hated that movie. <laughs> and they specifically yeah. mention it as Stab 8 or something like that. Like a specific yeah. jab at Ryan Johnson in The Last Jedi, which I thought was funny wow. despite how I feel about those movies. Um, I, I don't think you feel about those movies. So with all that being said, I'm going to give Scream a 6 out of 10. Oh. All right. Yeah. So yeah, that's the first film. That's that. And then at least the next movie to being Uncharted, which we obviously can both talk about. Oh. Yeah, right. I'll let you go first. That's probably my least favorite movie of this year, honestly. Like, as such a big unadulterated Uncharted fan who likes the games a lot, you know, those are pretty those games are pretty like perfect not perfect, but just like really good adventures to just sit through and watch with all the cinematic aspects and just great characters. A bombastic action, my god. But I think it's been I think it's been said before, but if not, I'm gonna say it again or first time ever. Um the point of Uncharted, the the games, is that you're basically just watching a movie throughout, you know, a video game. Somehow, whoa, super shocking. That didn't apply very well to having a game in a movie. And, I don't know. I, I, like, they try to copy a lot from the games. Oh, yeah. Like, to, 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 the, to the bone. And it's just la It's just it's not as good or even good at all. And maybe it's not fault because I think the game has the advantage of being more having more leeway to for everything. Mm -hmm. But this didn't feel like an Uncharted movie. It felt like like some modern cheesy Hollywood action adventure movie with a name Uncharted and Uncharted characters. Quote unquote Uncharted characters because no one in that movie is at all like the Redeeming kind of parts. Not even close. Not even close. I was just watching Tom Holland Tom Holland Nathan Nathan Drake, uh, Mark Wahlberg, a uh, Mark Wahlberg. Uh, that's, I think that's about all I can say because I, I don't remember anyone else. Um, oh, uh, mm -hmm. he's new. He's original. I was gonna name Antonio's character. Oh, but uh, yeah, Mankata. Yeah, but uh, what about that character? He just gets shattered nothing. to the side afterwards. He really does. Exactly. Yeah, um, and that's the point because I was excited to see him as a villain. Very excited. Yeah, I when I kinda heard huh? this fig at that a certain point in the movie, I was like, "Yeah, I'm glad he's gone because he was sleeping throughout this whole movie." He, he was. He was sleeping. not like not not like the other one that was any better. She was at least having fun. I guess. At least she. At least it felt like she was trying. Like she wasn't just there yeah. for the paycheck. But when I look at like un a good uncharted villain, uh, Razar from Uncharted Two. Like, he has such a big impact on, like, the world and the characters. And, like, each of the villains in Uncharted, the movie, lacked any of that. Because mm -hmm. you felt like everything that the villain did in Uncharted 2, like, it mattered and it had a big impact. It moved on to the next phase. I think it's going to just happen in Uncharted, the film. And it really just takes me out a lot of it. There's a... I guess if I'm gonna get into like the very few positives, there's a ooh a cameo with a uh, oh Noah yeah, North, Noah you know, North. yeah, that was nice, very that, nice. That, that made me smile. That cameo was soured for me by them playing the uncharted, deciding to play the uncharted theme there. Really, that that made it kind of better for me. Well, what was it for you? It was because the entire movie they don't play it. They have this. Oh, and they play it. They have this <laughs> yeah. grand adventure theme that plays throughout the whole movie. And I was like, God. okay, this would be really, at least this would be fun if you had the Uncharted theme. And then they decide to play it in this random scene with Nolan North. And I was like, oh, come on. Now you chose to play it. 
I was like, I've been waiting for you the whole movie. Um, you know, I have to echo a lot of what you said. Uh, as an Uncharted fan, um, this movie is... I don't feel as strongly as you about it when it comes to like the quality of the film. But I have to echo everything you've said. This is uh, just a bland adventure movie. There's nothing about this that sticks out as Uncharted. Yep. Um, I have probably more positives to say than you. I think none of the action is particularly bad or poorly edited or directed. I think it's all competently made. I just didn't care about what was going on to feel invested or excited. Um, and for me, I think this movie is made ten times better with Tom Holland. I, I genuinely think if Tom Holland wasn't in this movie giving a million percent, this movie would have been ten times worse. I, I yeah. believe that. I don't know if you agree with that. but Probably. He is trying, man. He's trying in this movie. He is. And he's doing a lot of his own stunts. But he's, not, he's really not trying to be Nolan North. No, he's not. He's not. Nolan North? Oh, yeah. Nathan Drake. Either one. He's not trying to be. Oh, no, no, is it Drake? Fuck. No one no, is Nathan Drake, but this character is yeah. not Nathan. Mm -hmm. And they didn't even sprinkle any bits of Nathan in him. He doesn't have any. And, and, and love I can for adventure that. or you know, yeah. strive to to do it. I've seen interviews. I can tell he's an Uncharted fan. Yeah, I know. I know this guy is a fan of this franchise, but you know, I guess he didn't have as much creative input as we would have liked. Yeah. I mean, this movie, wasn't, had a wasn't the, this movie had a trouble. I was going to say, yeah, it, was, it wasn't like making this film like a, a, hum, a huge mess overall. Yeah, this movie was supposed to come out initially like 10, 15 years ago with Mark, <laughs> as Wahlberg, Mark Wahlberg. With Mark Wahlberg as, as, as Sully, but it eventually took so long that Mark Wahlberg got too old for the role. And so he got put in as Sully, and Tom Holland got cast as Nate. Which, that's another thing. Mark Wahlberg is painful in this movie. Yeah. Like, especially just recently, as in a couple days ago, I rewatched the movie The Fighter, which is a brilliant mm. film, by the way. 10 out of 10 masterpiece. Oh. He's fantastic in it. In, that, in this movie, he's just on autopilot. Like, he's not even remotely trying. And it's not even his fault. It's the script. But he's not Sully. No matter how much no. you tell me he's Sully, he's not. Yeah. Yeah. I think I just tolerate him because he's Mark Wahlberg and I, and, I, and I like Mark Wahlberg. I enjoy Mark Wahlberg, it's but I really couldn't, I could not enjoy him in this movie. Yeah. He was genuinely infuriating to watch. Yeah. Um, Man, they don't even have good payoffs or setups. Ugh. Just simple little thing. Like you, you can tell they had ideas for doing setups and payoffs, but like they're so. Mm -hmm. Ham-fisted and Like the lame. tease of uh, Sam at the end. Mm -hmm. Which, that's another thing, but... Oh, God. Oh, God, they're gonna make another one. Yeah, they probably will, since this movie made a lot of money. Oh. Simply just because of No Way Home hype and Tom Holland. That's that's how this movie made that much money. Yeah. And because of us, because we, we the fools, went to see it. We did. We went to a Thursday night showing of it. We went to an early preview. Well, if you have anything more to add, go ahead. Because I think uh, I said my piece. Yeah, yeah, it, it sucks. Uh, what would you give it? Or what did you give it? Uh, I don't know. I, I think that was a, like a four or a three. What do you want to say? Three and a half? Three point five? I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to go with three and a half. All right. So that's your official score. 3.5 out of 10 for you. Look at that. For now. For now. You know, I, I'm not going to watch it again, so... I probably won't I'm not watch gonna... it I'm not watching it again yeah. either. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's going to be a five. I'm mm. a little softer on it. I can see parts of it that I think were competent, competently made, and it's done well, but... Yeah. Uh, this isn't good by any stretch of the imagination. Red Notice was a better Uncharted movie than Uncharted. <laughs> I hated Red Notice. Red Notice is really bad, too. Yeah. Well... Do you have anything more to add before we go to the next one? Um, I really, I, I, I was really bothered by how they implemented the uh, Uncharted, like, like the action scenes in the Uncharted games. Like, um, they, they didn't need to be there. No, they didn't, man. 
or I don't know, they, they wanted to give it familiarity or people could recognize it. That's probably what I don't know. Like, oh, it's from the game. It's from the game. I, but I'm really wondering how many Uncharted fans actually want to see this movie. I don't think any of them liked it, but I don't know. Oh. yeah. Well, I guess that takes us to our next one. It does. That being Marry Me, which is a film only I saw. Have I heard of this before? Uh, maybe. It's a romantic comedy with Owen Wilson and Jennifer Lopez. Oh, oh yeah, that one. That yeah. some Peacock. I didn't see it. Yeah. I don't have much to say about this movie. Um, <laughs> it is a very generic uh, romantic comedy. Very generic. Really, nothing about it stands out. Jennifer Lopez than... ever not in a in a generic movie. I don't know, man. Uh, Hustlers. I didn't see that. Um, I think that's probably also on Peacock. Eh? Yeah, Marry Me just screams feel good. You know, came out on Valentine's Day. It's a romantic comedy. It's got a interesting cast. It's you know Jennifer Lopez Ooh. and Owen Wilson, and for the most part, they have surprisingly good chemistry with each other. They work well. With each other. I, I could see the chemistry in the trailer. Yeah, when I, it, that came it, out. It works. Having seen the whole movie, they work well together. But this movie hits checks every box of the romantic comedy, you know, charade. Nothing. Everything in this movie is predictable. You can figure out what's going to happen before you even watch it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's really all I can say. I mean, I, I really can't say too much about it. Anything abysmal? Nothing? Uh, no, nothing's abysmal. Except for Maluma's acting, but... Who's? Maluma. Maluma? Yeah, he's in this movie. Who's Maluma? Oh, he's a singer. I could not tell you what he's done. Oh, is, is, he, is he supposed to be the ex? He's, he's, yeah, he's the ex. Oh, okay. So, yeah. I think with that, I'm going to give the same store, uh, score as Uncharted a 5 out of 10. I... Really don't have much to say about this movie. It summed up very quickly. But um, I did not hate myself watching it. All right. But I will just as quickly forget it. Forget about it. T-1 is one day. It basically. Already forgot. Yeah, already forgot. Well, let's head to the next film, which would be... Mm -hmm. Jackass be? Forever, which is all you, buddy. Oh my god! Listen, I'm like a pretty good, like decent jackass fan i've seen you know all the movies i didn't see it as a show because i was probably too young at the time to even like know it was a show or even like catch it on mtv i believe that's what it was mm -hmm. um but you know you think in the in the in the age of um sanitized things they will go a little easier on themselves and the viewers but no they they ham the shit up for a jackass forever or four, I'd like to call it because it's easier. But man, they they do some stunts. These these daredevils are. I, I can think they're suicidal. Johnny Knoxville, he still got it, even even if he grew you know gray hairs. It was like James Gunn. Mm. I gotta say, like I was so taken aback by his gray hairs. What happened? Did he get he's stressed out? But he's fifty. He's fifty. Yeah, but he he's he. 50. Yeah, he had brown. He had like regular black on when he was forty nine. Yeah, aging happens to, to different to different people. Because James Gunn just dyed his hair white. Oh, did he? Oh, yeah, I thought he, he just died. turned no, old. No, James Gunn. I don't even think is as old as Johnny Knoxville, but I could be wrong. Maybe Johnny Knoxville dyed his hair white. <sighs> Shit, maybe. I don't know. It's a trend. <laughs> but well, even if he is old, it doesn't fucking show because. There he, there he is, getting concussions from a bull, jumping off ramps, getting electrocuted, bum bum bum, one not and what not, and so so with everyone else, King um, Stevo, like you know my spoilers, right? Some other stuff that I can tell you about. Yeah, you can tell me what happens. I don't, I don't care. All right, all right, right, right. So Jackass as well is I don't know if it's well known for this, but I've never seen naked men so much in anything in my life. But all the Jackass films. Just they're, they're, they're wieners, buttholes, and whatnot. It's just we'll swing about so comfortably. No, no fucks given. Mm. And 
there was, you know, fucking Steve-O making one of the, probably one of the most painful looking stunts of all time. Not a stunt, it's just a little gag mm -hmm. where they put the... Is it the they bees? Hooked, the bees. They, hook, they hooked the uh, a queen bee on, on his... Oh on his dick, and then there they all were. How did he go back? And then some of them even stung him. There he was, screaming in terrible, awful pain. And, and you know, the cameraman, who so nicely went behind uh, Steve-O to show us his butthole, but cracked and whatnot, and then the other side of his balls, while showing us all the stings, all the beast stings there, sw swelling up, Jesus. my lord. So terrible. Also, this might be the most cinematic out of all the Jackass films, because mm. of course, look at all that budget. It literally starts with a, with a Godzilla parody, hmm. and you never know. You'll never guess who or what the the Godzilla is. What's playing the Godzilla? It's a penis. Yeah. <laughs> So the way they did it is that they, they had this little built-in small city figure, and they just, you know, uh, painted the other side of his balls while adding um some kind of rubber-looking lizard thing. And they had that, the, the Godzilla thing. <laughs> Jesus. You know, they, they filmed, uh, you know, people in an actual city, mm -hmm. uh, you know, extras and whatnot she was blowing up we, we saw tony hawk there it was nice seeing him there uh the payoff for that which is how it ended is basically the creature shooting out it's uh it's a dragon not a dragon but it's shooting out his uh, atomic breath in a way which is basically just hmm. i don't think it was actual cum, but when, when you see the the real life version of it or from the POV of the uh of the civilians, it it, it is just a, it's just a it's just a whole lot of white stuff pouring onto them, and it's a lot. It's like also they uh you know how one of them, but you probably don't. But I think it was Jackass two or three. They uh one of them drank horse cum. Okay. They drink they drink pink. They one of them drinks pig cum in this one. Jesus. Apparently, it wasn't as bad as a, as a horse come for it. Yeah. That's gross. So pretty bad. <laughs> also, the the big fat guy, uh, out of out of the out of the three of them that I knew, uh, the original one, <laughs> he was so anxious about a, about a stunt that he shed his pants. Jeez. Didn't even get there in the end. <laughs> he shed his pants, and then he was he was basically worrying about it. And he was like, "Guys, I need to shed my pants. I need to shed my pants. I'm a grown man. I shed my pants." Jesus. Uh, it was a good time. I saw it with a couple of guys that were from work that were basically just cringing, laughing, just just as hard as I was, getting a little uncomfortable over the, the disgusting stuff. But overall, Jackass is a very good time. I I, I might get it on Blu-ray because just to see it again and maybe show it to you. Mm -hmm. Dang. Because <laughs> it it's such a fun time. Yeah. Like I can't like. It's probably just just a regular ass ten out of ten just for how fun it was. I can't even think of a single like. You said seven. No, just ten. Oh, ten. Yeah. Again, it, it, I can't think of like a flaw that I would think of it for like any other film, mm -hmm. because it's not like a film film with like writing flaws, plot or anything like that. It's just a just a whole lot of crazy, another traded mess. Damn. So ten out it's of very 10. enjoyable. Oh uh, yeah, it's just, just ten out of ten, you know. Oh well, damn, I can't wait it's to see this on your best of twenty twenty two list. It's definitely on my, my best. Yeah. Yeah, of course I wouldn't say it's better than something, something like the Batman, but yeah, it's just it's a whole lot of fun, man. I, I had a great time watching it, and there you I, go. I'm glad. I wasn't just I wasn't just laughing along with my with my friends there. There were people in in the theater going nuts, like yo, what the fuck? Yeah. Oh well, my that's what god! This yeah. Movie was made for. We were all loud. Yeah. And I'm very glad I got to see it in theaters too. So that was nice. Yeah. I, I wanted to see it, but I didn't get the chance. Oh. I wish I would have saw it though. But I'll, I'll definitely watch it at some point. I think you would have. I don't know. I've, I've, are you squeamish? Uh, when it comes to what? Or just um, in general? 
um shit piss fart mm-hmm. farting bottles penis i i can't say i'm i mean i don't like mm, i don't know i don't know i've never seen one of these movies so i don't really know what bleeding, else to do. bleeding from the nuts bleeding from the nut sack because i can't say i've here. seen that but i know i don't huh. i'm not queasy around blood all right so yeah i mean yeah these that, that was probably the worst one Seeing some guy get his nuts destroyed by basically a, a, a bunch of things. Yeah, he got his nuts destroyed by a bear football right? pitch by a soft player, softball player. Oh, well, a softball pitch by a softball player. Um, very nice punch from uh, um, this much a mixed right? much a a UFC fighter. fighter. Yeah, yeah, I, I saw uh, that. I saw that in the trailer. <laughs> a a pogo stick. Hockey. Uh, and last but not least, a fucking pogo stick. Jesus. These movies are ridiculous. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm in a hockey puck person in that pogo stick. That was the worst one because God, it dragged along his nuts and then he was bleeding afterwards. Jesus. Well, yeah, what, does that wrap something. that up? Oh my god. <laughs> I, I think it wraps it up. Oh my god. Yeah, good shit. Uh, I recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> So that's a good pitch, right? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> nice beach. Nice beach. Nice beach. Well, all right. I think that takes us into film number five, which is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, oh boy. Uh, I didn't see it. You didn't. You were at work when we watched this. Uh, watched this with a good friend of ours, Sebastian, who you would have seen, who've seen at some point in the, on the podcast. Oh, this movie was. This movie was tough. By the way, guys, I saw clips and it was. Yeah, we we showed you some clips and it. Oh my god. It was. This movie was torture. It it was, like. It was so fucking bad. Like I. Oh my god. Isn't it weird how out of, out of like all the uh. The Halloween esque reboots, Hallow, uh, no, not Halloween, Chance the Massacre is the worst one, right? Because it's the yeah. the one that least needed it. Mm-hmm. Like even Jeepers Creepers got one. Did it? Oh my god! It did. It went straight to video, so nobody saw it. <laughs> no wonder. Um, and this went straight to Netflix, and it's right where it belongs. Hey, there's some good stuff in Netflix. There is sometimes. But this sometimes. fits right in. <laughs> with their schlock, uh, yeah, with no, the this, shit. this movie's dog shit. Uh, like I can, I can only think of one decent thing about it, and then it's really short. Saying, did you have any doubts going into that it was gonna be like bad? No, I had no question in my mind that it was gonna be awful, but not just not that bad. Yeah, just not that bad. It, yeah, it was. Oh my god. Don't be surprised if this ends up on my worst of list or at the top, because I don't know if I'll see anything worse than this this year. I just don't know. I really don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, this movie, still did, up. this movie didn't even make me mad. It was just, yeah. It was Exhausting. just everything you would expect in a awful, you know, slasher movie. Dumb characters, dumb monster, dumb everything. I like it when characters are smart in slasher films because it, like, adds more, you know, wonder and, like, what's going to happen to them. That's cool. Yeah. It's also Predator. everyone oh. sucks in this movie. So, uh, like, I would much rather watch The Predator over this, and that's not even a joke. Man. And The Predator's really bad. So that's like a, that's a bar right there. I, if Are you, you ever sure? watch this, you, if you watch this, you cannot tell me that The Predator is worse than this. I don't know much that's worse than the Predator, but oh man, challenge accepted. I will die on the hill that the Predator is better than this. Mm-hmm. I will die on that hill. The Predator is like a two. Yeah, and you know what I give this yeah. movie? A one. A one. Mm-hmm. I th- if I remember correctly, that is the same score I gave Halloween Kills. And oh yeah. This movie made me want to apologize to Halloween Kills. Halloween Kill must be better, I bet. Right? Right? I guess yeah, I mean, you don't want to be worse than Halloween Kills. No, sure. but you are. This movie <laughs> is. 
this movie really wanted made me want to go look at Halloween Kills dead in the eyes and go, I'm sorry. Sorry. It's not I'm your sorry, fault. Little one. I'm sorry, little one. Because this movie is dog to the shit. A water. Like, You're even beautiful. the gore is just ridiculous. Oh, uh, yeah, I saw a clip, and it was so funny because the gore was so bad. Yeah. Man. Ugh. This movie's dog water. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. I'm done. This this movie's stupid. It's <laughs> yeah. Well, next movie like... is Studio Six Six Six, which I also saw. So I will have to give my thoughts. Also, yeah, I saw this by myself when I saw this with uh, Sebastian, and yeah, yeah. Uh, this movie was a fun time. It it was a fun time. Is it? Good? I don't know. Probably not. Uh, well, certainly not. I think which is which is Studio Six 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 because I don't. So I'm, this I'm is the Foo blind. Fighters movie. Uh, so the plot is that the Foo Fighters are about to make a album and they decide to go right. to this. I know. Uh, yeah, I remember, yeah, house I that's haunted because a band was murdered there. Keep forgetting what what it is. And hilarity ensues, I guess. It's also a horror movie. I like hilarity in this household. Um, the movie did not stop ever. It did not stop being funny. And ne almost never for legitimate laughs. Like, this movie is very poorly made. Very poorly acted. Yeah. Even by the professional actors. Not even just from Foo Fighters. Um, there's some good gore. Nice. Um, Lisa has that, right? Yeah. And there are, you know, there are actual legitimate laughs in this movie. This movie is pretty funny at times. And it has a lot of balls to kind of do what it does. But I would also be lying through the skin of my teeth if I didn't say that this movie was pretty bad. Just, you know, all around. But you know what? I had a great time. I had a lot of nice. fun. This movie's so much fun. And that's important. Having fun. And yeah, you shouldn't go into this movie, you know, thinking you're going to get some great story. Just don't. You're going in to watch a Foo Fighters movie. You know, like, what are you there to watch? And no. I, saw, I saw this in an empty theater. And I think oh my I God. believe that was the way to see it. Right in theaters? Yeah, I did. It was only in theaters. Oh my God. Yeah. So on, uh, only way to see it is an empty, is an empty theater or a theater? I think that was the objectively best way to see it, was in an empty theater, uh -huh. where we could talk out loud about how dumb some of this stuff was. <laughs> and I could also oh, like laugh. Like Resident Evil? Scene. No. And I could also laugh to my heart's content as loud as I wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I'm going to give this a very simple 3 out of 10. But if I were to give it an enjoyment score, it would be an 8 out of 10. That's good. I had a great time, but it's not good. Will you see it on my worst of the year list? I don't know. Probably. I doubt no. it. But if it's there, that means this year would have been amazing. And if we just keep putting movies um, on top because of enjoyment value, then we're gonna have a lot of a lot of bad movies on top. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's our fate now. Let's head to the next film, which is Fresh, which is another one that I I saw on my own. Jesus. Um, this was on Hulu, and um, I don't actually want to give too much of the plot away, because. A lot of this movie kind of relies on what you know about it going in. And I am going to be good to you and tell you nothing other than that it is a horror movie starring Sebastian Stan and Daisy Edgar, Edgar Jones here. That's Ooh. it? I will, well, okay, I will probably tell you more, but I don't want to give like the main like hook of the movie away because... They don't really tell you what this movie is about. Like, the opening credits of the movie don't start until 30 minutes in. Mm. 
What? Mm hmm. All right. Because they took the opening 30 minutes to tell you to kind of set up the characters and set up the everything that's going on. And then once something is revealed, then the movie starts. <laughs> What's that? How, how was that? Like, is that good or bad? Uh, that was incredibly what, what jarring, happened? but like I was really taken aback. Just muted myself. There we go. I was taken aback by it heavily when the um, opening title started 30 minutes in. Mm. But I was kind of like, at that point, I think I was in. Like, I was just in with the movie. I see. And so, yeah, the movie hooked me from that moment on. And it's all the right levels of comfortable, funny, and, you know... Funny? Like, wait, is this like a serious horror movie or like a funny it's, horror movie? It has comedy in it, but it's it's not it's not, you know, horror comedy. I wouldn't call it horror comedy. Um it's just one of those like laugh at how intense the situation is, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's also like it kinda. No, it was trying to be a comedy about halfway through half of that movie. Uh, they they were directly doing jokes. This is more um like actually pretty well placed, you know, funny jokes with like characters that are in a horrible situation trying to make the best of it. All right. So it would kind of make sense that they are joking with each other. Um trying to at least. And yeah, this movie took me off guard. I didn't know where it was going. I was genuinely feared uh, fearful of the main character. Um I was scared for her. I wanted her to be okay. And yeah, this movie's incredibly well directed and written. Um, the first timer, I believe, M Mimi Cave. And she did a great job, and I would love to see whatever she does next. This was a really fun, really entertaining movie. If I had to come up with any problems, I think some of the pacing is off. Uh, it could have been trimmed down maybe another 10, 15 minutes. If I remember correctly, it's close to two hours. It doesn't really need to be. Um, but a lot of it works really well for the for the uh, point of the film. And another thing, this movie made me really uncomfortable. If I didn't already say that, but, but, yeah, um, to, get, to, get, which, to get the point across, yeah, to get the point across, the movie made me really uncomfortable. I think it was supposed to, considering the subject matter. And I I think for that reason, I don't know if I'll ever watch it again. But that was most certainly the point, is to make you uncomfortable. And Sebastian Stan, dude, maybe the best I've ever seen him. Like, holy shit, he's insanely good in this. That's good. Like, you, like when every time he's on screen, I just didn't want to stop watching him. I just wanted to keep seeing what he was doing. Which, you know, sign of a great, you know, performance. And uh, Daisy Edgar Jones, no slack either. She's incredible. I mean, I'm not even sure I can like, judge Sebastian Stan like, in, into things that he has and hasn't done because I've, I've, I'm pretty sure I've only seen his MCU stuff. And that's uh, unfortunate. He's a great, <laughs> actor. He's a great actor. He really he is. is. Even in the MCU stuff, he does a great job. Yeah, of course. But yeah, he really gets to stretch himself in this one. It's on Hulu. If you have Hulu, give it a watch. It, it's very good. The same way you turn me on into Palm Springs, I'm going to try to turn you on to Fresh. Uh, this movie's great. I am going to give it, I believe, I gave it an 8.5 out of 10. That is what I gave if you, it. If you were to watch it again, like in some odd world, would it, you think that would change? It could go up. All right. It could go up. But yeah, this movie's great. I, I think I think you should watch it. Um, if this ends up on my list, I would not be opposed to it. All right. Yeah, I think that's... Yeah, I'm going to say that's about all for that. 
So, next movie is... Oh, uh, I, I, I guess I should ask questions. Like, out of horror movies that you've seen recently, where would that be? This is one of the better ones I've seen in the past few years. Because there aren't a lot, a lot of good there ones coming out. There a lot of great ones, yeah. Yeah, what movie we yeah, Turning Red is the next movie we have up here. Ah, I saw that one. <laughs> you did, so we can both talk about this. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen it more once? I haven't seen it once. I so. have only seen it once. All right. As of, as of time of recording, I've only seen it once. Yeah, so Turning Red is basically the only Pixar film that I've seen since, I think, Soul. Soul? Yeah. Which yeah, wasn't too long since, ago, but, you know. It's still Soul, worth Soul was, what, 2020? Out. Yeah. It's still worth pointing out, though. It is. I mean, yeah, that... That's let me say that I've missed like two films from there from them. Yeah, you saw you didn't see Onward or Luca, did you? Mm-hmm. No, I didn't see those. And you know, I I, I wasn't even thinking of watching Turning Red because I one I, I wasn't really able to. Mm-hmm. And I didn't really care for it. But then my stepsister like got Disney Plus, and I thought, nah, oh, might as well. I'm like, you know, Gabe talked about it, so he liked it. And I I said, no, oh, why not? And then I saw it, and then I, and I was like, well. Pleasant surprise. This is the same thing. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. A good animated film. How about that? Did you look at that? Yeah. I mean, it's nice seeing something that isn't fucking Encanto over and over again. That was nice. Yeah. I, I, I also really enjoyed this movie a lot. I, I think it's really, really fucking good. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's hilarious, for one. It's very funny. Very funny. I, I don't think there was a joke that I really missed. Like, say, I, I, that wasn't the funny. No, I think I laughed yeah, at basically everything. Yeah, everything was pretty but, but not even, with the humor. Yeah, not even laugh out loud funny shows. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I did have a few genuine, like, laugh out loud, like, big laughs. I was like, whoa, that that was really, that was really good. Mm. This movie's really risky, too. Like, a lot of stuff I didn't think you could say in a PG movie. Is that a challenge? They said. Yeah, they said we're gonna bring up drugs and strippers in a PG movie for kids. <laughs> but um, it's the point. This movie further accentuates why Pixar and all anim- movie, animated movies should strive to be for everyone, not just for kids. Because there's been a big debate as of recently due to um, recently. Yes, very recently. Mm-hmm due to an Oscars bit where they had three uh, of the live-action Disney princesses come up and say that, oh, I know these animated movies. You had to play them for your kids so they would shut up. You know what you're, you know, we know what you're talking about. And Phil Lord, one of the directors of Call the Chance of Meatballs, Lego Movie, and Spider-Verse, ranted on Twitter about how disrespectful that was. I thought this debate ended like one Lion King came out. Because, because... Um, <laughs> So, in the animation industry, they're still treated as if they're just working on kid stuff, and that no. they can grow into making real movies. And so, Phil Lord is really trying to accentuate how, like, they're still not respected in the industry. They still or are should not I, I guess they're really not, damn. Kids movies, when they make movies for everybody. And mm-hmm. Pixar, along with many other of the great animation studios working, have consistently proved the point that animated films are just like any other movie. They should be judged at the same uh, scale as you would a serious drama, a serious live-action drama. And time and time again, they prove the point that they are just as good as any other movie that comes out in the year. Man, dude. My favorite movie <laughs> of 2020 was Soul. Yeah. One of my favorite movies of 2018 was Spider-Verse. The best comic book movie of all time is Spider Verse, by the way. So the best comic book movie I've ever seen is Spider Man into the Spider Verse. Yeah. One of my favorite movies of all time is Ratatouille, and Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, and the Lego Wally and Wally. Wally is one of my favorite movies of all fucking time. Mega Mind, How to Train Your Dragon, Kung Fu Panda. Endless amounts of animated films. Generally, dude, this like I feel like this this should have never been a debate. Of some of the best dramas and some of the best live action films I've ever seen. Yeah. Dude, an the animated best, film. The, in the words of John Campia recently, the best movie is the best movie. Who gives a shit where it comes from? Snow White. 
<laughs> Snow White was Disney's like first animated film, and that basically made made their career. Yeah. What are you on about? Like, and, and I'm pretty sure everybody saw that. Yeah, everyone saw Snow White. Everyone loves at Snow the time. White. What the hell are we talking about anymore? It's because they're are still we... not respected. They still can't, you know. Like, how hard is it? How often do you see animation directors do live action stuff? It's so rare. Oh, Brad Bird. You have Brad right. Bird, and you have Morton Miller. What did he do? 21 and 22 Jump Street. Lord and Miller did 21 and 22 Jump Street. While oh, also, what was the while also, what was, yeah. Hmm? What was the animated stuff? Also, doing Cloudy the Chance of Meatballs, the Lego ah. movie, and Spider Verse. <laughs> hey, let's go. Well, for Spider Verse, Phil Lord was a writer and co-director. Yeah, uh, those were mostly handled by the other guys that the other amazing guys that worked on Spider Verse. But they, for sure, like were a hundred percent directors of Cloudy, writer and directors of Cloudy the Chance of Meatballs and the Lego Movie. Crazy! I can't believe this is still a fucking debate. I can't believe it. Anyway, turning red. Sorry, side rant, but it had to. Be, yeah. It has to be said. This movie's amazing, and. I can judge it on those same level of those movies and consider it better in many aspects. Mm -hmm. Not to say this is one of Pixar's best. I think this probably no. I wouldn't even the mid tier or upper mid tier of. I wouldn't even say top ten. Maybe I wouldn't even say that. Probably like it's not top ten. It's top twenty. It was just yeah. Obviously, basically, I was just always just falling like number thirteen or twelve. Yeah, it's it's a mid tier. It's a mid tier Pixar movie. That doesn't make it bad. Because, that doesn't make it bad. Yeah, it's because yeah. Pixar has such a good has history, such a high yeah. bar. They have high bar high too. Bar. Like they've, I don't think they've ever like surpassed their top three. After that, yeah, top but three being they're they've been consistent. Yeah. Well, and, and as of late, not so much. But you know, you can usually expect a good movie from them. Yeah. So maybe their newer newer films have been better than their sequels. Yeah. That's been consistent. Um, even stuff like Luca, which I thought was pretty mid as a movie, I had a good time. Yeah. You know, Luca made me cry. I did it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I felt like a Turning bitch, Red didn't. But Turning Red. Yeah, Turning didn't Red is have not, like. Yeah, it's not trying to either. I thought it was. <laughs> but I mean, I've seen people cry to it, you know. Yeah. That's probably because they relate specifically to it. Yeah. Also, I don't yeah. agree with the awful take that this movie's made for a specific kind of person for a specific experience. I think that's I bullshit. Think Anyone who's gone through years, puberty can understand really... what May is going through. <laughs> yeah, I think teenagers can relate more to it, but other than that... Yeah, it's a movie everybody can relate to, if mm -hmm. they think about it. <laughs> yeah. You know? But, uh, I guess we should actually probably talk about how good the movie is. <laughs> Uh, as for flaws, I think there's some issues with some of the writing, and particularly the mother character. I think the message there is a little muddled. Sure, contrivances. Um, yeah, it's not a perfect movie, but you know what? It's pretty uh, the, good. It's pretty good. Yeah, the, the world kind of has to stand still for them to do their thing. Yeah. Like, no one fine. else has to it's, exist. It's a slice of life movie. Yeah. It's what it is, you know? Oh, because of I, life. I, I Cause, also, ah, because anime. Right. Yeah, I get it. You made very it funny. Inspi very inspired by anime. Um, didn't I don't think I mentioned this when I first talked to you about it. The score is great for this. I, uh, I only remember the uh the final song. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the score is done by Ludwig Göransson. Oh. Oh yeah, I, I found that out. Yeah, and once I was like, but... once I like his name popped up, I was like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> It's like I, I knew I heard some of you in there. I'm gonna see it again to see what I what I can pick up from like the yeah, music. I, I wanna I wanna see it again just to kind of like you know, pick up on uh, some of the jokes or Look, something. Ludwig like doing a Ludwig doing a fucking animated film? He's done a few. I he did the really? Trolls movies. <laughs> That's oh, not no. even a joke. He did the I Trolls movies, you. he did this and I think that's it. He did some of Disney shorts too, but that's it. Oh, and, well, ain't that? Well, ain't that a shame? Yeah. 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 
you know, what would you uh, what would you rate it? I would rate it an eight. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a good score. I think I missed what you gave it. What you gave it? Um, that's funny because I also gave it an eight. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, that's a pretty good movie. Pretty recommended. Very funny. Uh, I'm so uh, you know better than Encanto. <laughs> it's not a fair comparison. For yeah, fuck it, I was so sick of Encanto. Yeah, that's not fair because you were incredibly biased in this comparison. I mean, it's it's still better though. You you, you disagree? That's not better. I don't think this movie's better than Encanto, but also I haven't been overexposed to it yet. So what would you give any... Encanto then? Is Encanto like Enc- an eight point five? Yeah, I gave Encanto like an eight point five. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the the debate between Turning Red and Encanto will, will arrive soon, guys. Don't worry about it. Oh sure. Well, <laughs> next movie, The Atom Project, which is something I saw. Oh boy, you saw Deadpool three? Nice. <laughs> I wish. Um, yeah, the Adam, the Adam Project is an interesting little little movie that I think is pretty good. I don't think I can say any more than it's good. Its plot so is... So twist to this, yeah. <laughs> the plot is pretty generic. Uh, you know, it's not going to surprise you in any way. Known to man. But what it does have, it's relying heavily on the two leads, that being Ryan Reynolds and Walker Scobell, who plays his younger version. And they work wonders together. Like, this movie lives and dies on them. And... Nice. I just muted myself, sorry. This movie lives and dies uh, on you them. You keep doing that. I keep doing it. This movie lives and dies on them. And they, they're, they're brilliant together. Yeah, the, the movie will literally die without without them. It will yeah. die. Like it will, it will literally like, will die. It will go go deceased. It will bleed out and and ask why, why did why did you do this? And this kid Walker Scobell channels Ryan Reynolds so perfectly, like he's that like l- right. He's like at that level of annoying that only Ryan Reynolds can do, but apparently uh. not only Ryan Reynolds can do it because this kid nails it. This and, is clone, buddy. It's literally his clone. And there's actually a really funny video of him reciting the entire Deadpool 2 opening monologue. Uh, Listen, he's gonna, he's gonna like, he's all. gonna grow up. Yeah, he's gonna grow up and he's gonna look just like Ryan Reynolds. So she. But, and like, what the fuck? Uh, the, uh, this is directed by Sean Levy, who did um, Free Guy most recently with Ryan Reynolds. Um, and it's got that same kind of camera work for the action. Which there isn't much of. There's only like two action scenes in this movie, really, two or three, um, and they're all well filmed, well edited. They're they're pretty fun action scenes. Um, if I were to complain about a lot anything, I would say there's a couple characters that have literally nothing to do in the movie. That being Zoe Saldana. Right, she's in it. She's in it for like five minutes. Oh, really? She's Literally? Five minutes? Maybe ten. She's not oh. in the movie for long. What a paycheck. Yeah, let's go. She's incredibly wasted. Like, she really could have been any other actress. Like, well, her, she know, has nothing to do in the movie. And the villain, know, like, the villain character, played by Catherine Keener, is so awful <laughs> uh, that she's just incredibly forgettable. And there's some really bad CGI in terms of like some de-aging effects. This is a Netflix movie, right? Yeah. It's got a pretty good budget for a Netflix movie and it actually has some pretty good CGI in other areas. It's just the de-aging tech. There's some de-aging in this movie. It isn't it, Chief. It Sorry. looks like worse than Rogue One Leia. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Like, it's almost on that same level of uh, Jeff Bridges and Tron Legacy. Like, it's it's that level of, like, Uncanny Valley gross. Even, even as a kid, uh, Jeff Bridges <laughs> and Tron was like, oh, God. It didn't God. look good, even back then. Oh, it God. looked jarring. It looked really jarring. It is, oh, um, boy, did it. But, you know, as much as I can harp on that, this movie has a lot of heart. And it, it tugged on my heartstrings. I 
I nearly teared up about twice in this movie. It, it, it's about family, and that's what's important. It's it's, it's about <laughs> it's well, it's more about a father son relationship. Oh, that's a joke, but yeah, I love that quote. <laughs> it's about it's about family, and that's what matters now. You see, that's funny. Don't mind me. It is about a father son relationship, and I think when they introduce it into the film, when they really delve into it, and they pay it off, it hit me right in the heart, man. It really got to me. I wish my dad was like that. Yeah, uh, Mark Ruffalo is great in it too. I probably should mention Mark Ruffalo is great in this. Um, he's also playing essentially an older Ryan Reynolds. You can see it's kind of meant to be like, oh, you can see where Ryan got his smart ass. Uh, mannerisms, because he got it from his dad. <laughs> like me. Um, but yeah. Uh, this movie's a lot of fun. I had a good time. I'll probably watch it again. It's pretty short. It's like uh, an hour 50. Um, and, it, and it went by. It went by really fast. This movie doesn't have any pacing problems. Hmm. So with that, I'm going right. to give it a 7 out of 10. Closer to a 6 than an 8. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a seven out of ten. Uh, we love you, Adam. <laughs> I don't. Adam, I love you. Don't listen to him. He's not making fun of you. He's he's I'm honoring totally, you because you're great. I'm totally making fun of you, but I also enjoy your stuff. I love you. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably it for that one. We'll probably move. It. Right. Oh my God. It. We can oh. move right on to the next movie, which would be. Jujutsu Kaisen. Would you oh, look at that? Well, oh, oh, well, uh, um, I guess I'll start. Oh, man, I'm really disappointed by this movie. Yeah, same. No, I, I, I hit it a little more because I was just taken, I was taken aback and out of the experience by the fucking voice acting. Yeah, we see in our the, theater, they played it dubbed. Yeah, the English dub was just, it was, it was it for me. I was like, mm, this ain't it, this ain't it, Chief. And I totally feel like it could be better with, you know, with um, mm. Japanese dubs. Because if I thought of, because the uh, actress who played, who was going to play, um, uh, what was his name in the movie? Oh. Uh, y- Yuta. Yuta. Yeah. Who was going to play Yuta. Main main character, Kun. Yeah. He was going to be played by the same chick who played Shinji Ikari in the, the Evangelion series. And she's pretty great. At playing those roles, she has she has a really strong scream, and I thought, oh, it's gonna be great. I'm gonna be really invested in this character because she really brings out, you know, the the hurt and whatever in them. But whoever the fuck played uh, Yuda in this one was like, oh, yo, <laughs> oh man, you're probably you're trying. I think you're trying, but you're not doing a great job. I didn't have as much of an issue with the voice acting, but yeah, it just wasn't a very great dub overall. Um, nothing was incredibly impressive. Uh, except something... for the ridiculous amount of times they say the word monkey. Which... Monkey. Oh, we fucking, we lost our shit. We were, no, listen, we're cool. Yeah, no, we, like, all, all of us, we yeah. lost our shit. Okay, so we saw it with a group of our friends who have all seen the anime. Um, we were, so we were all pretty invested in seeing it. And us, along with like two other pocket groups in the theater, were collectively losing our minds the amount of times they said the word monkey. Yeah. And like in context, it's so much funnier. Mm-hmm. Which, if there's anything, this movie is actually funny when it tries to be, like legitimately. It's... Um, there's it's really well animated, has some good action, but not a bad movie by any means. No, it's it's just kind of like, like I think like in a, in a row of like anime movies that I've seen, you know, for, like, the, like, the last two years, this kind of just missed for me. This movie feels like it's, like, three episodes split up. Like, you yeah. can feel where the anime OP starts, the anime ED starts, and then you go into the next episode. I mean, I don't even know where you could, like, place this movie in the anime. <laughs> this is short. This could have been an OVA, honestly. Yeah. This movie also, like... It kind of felt a little long. It was an hour forty. Um, not in the same way that like the Demon Slayer movie felt long for me, where there was like a stretch of time where nothing interesting was particularly happening. Um, this movie just felt like it was stretched out. Mm. 
And also, I didn't help. I don't think the the sub would have fixed this either. I don't like Yuta as a protagonist. Oh. I think he's incredibly boring and doesn't have anything to offer me that I can get from any other shonen protagonist. The only interesting about him, thing about him is the stuff they tell you at the end of the movie. Right. Well, I don't agree, but hmm? I can see why you would. I, I don't agree, but I can see why you would. That's also just me personally being really annoyed by shonen cliches. Would you would you call you a shonen as protagonist? Because he was like pretty. He wasn't like a like a Natsu or a. No, he wasn't like generic. I mean, he was generic, but he wasn't like yeah. He wasn't Naruto. He wasn't Natsu. He wasn't even Itadori. He was just. Hmm, Listen, I'm you know, weakling, you know, I'm weakling uh, Beta. Can't do Listen, anything, Itadori. But then, it's fucking great. But then, uh, you know, Itadori is great. Like, yeah, Yuta's just like uh, I'm bootleg Shinji. Uh, bootleg Shinji. Oh, <laughs> okay. Bootleg Shinji, who has a uh, demon girl, who is Listen, a lot of a lot of people really like him in the manga, and that's fine. Maybe he's better in the manga. I don't know. I didn't read it. My sister did, but I didn't read it. I went. I went to the movie knowing literally nothing other than that it was a prequel. I went in completely blind. So the movie hit me with a bunch of shit that I didn't know about. Um, it was cool seeing the older the older characters from the anime. It was. Do they need to be there? Yeah, I mean, considering what was happening, it, you know, they they were explicit about. I mean, we we, we can just infer that they were there. We don't really need, need scenes about them. That we, was we didn't need basically fan service. Yeah, that was fan service. We didn't need those scenes. But yeah, um, I mean, they didn't make the movie. They made the movie better. <laughs> they were better they, to be honest. They did kind of make the movie better. Um. For me, funny enough, what made this movie actually a lot of fun was the villain, uh, Sato or Gato, as they kept saying yeah. in the dub. He, he, once he shows up in the movie, I had an infinitely better time. Like he just made the movie so much better to watch. He's not even a racist. He's not even racist and whatnot. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> Do you see that? He hit him with he hit us with the Frieza. <laughs> <laughs> Mm, yeah. Okay, because I'm gonna say this. I think the Demon Slayer movie is better. It is. It's it's a much more of a movie. Like it has a art, it has a story that it tells that can be fulfilled in a movie that doesn't feel like it's episodes split apart, but feels like a co cohesive whole that was specifically made to be a movie. Yeah. The Jujutsu Kaisen movie, in contrast, feels like a few episodes that they kind it, of strung together. Yeah, it really doesn't feel like a movie. No. Do I regret seeing it? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> I am more than happy that I saw it. I'm going to watch it again. And, and you yeah, know, I'll Japanese watch stuff. It again. And the Japanese stuff, whenever that comes out. Will I make it soon? You know, will I, like, spend the god ungodly amounts of money to buy this on a blu-ray no no i'll wait till the sub comes out on like crunchyroll and then watch it there yeah um but i don't know what'd you think of the action i think i already said my piece on that in the animation uh action was neat there wasn't too much of it no um and they uh, they really like cutting cutting away from the action oh so i couldn't God. really get into it all that much a lot of times they did that so yeah, I don't know. The trailers made it. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. like Asian Ultron. They they made it. Trailers so awesome. Big action piece. And then fucking no, we're not gonna show you that. <laughs> there's a couple. There's a handful of pretty good fights. Well, we well we all had a, all a joy. Short. We all had a good time. See a joy, you know, watching Gojo oh, lay absolutely. down yeah. the the smackdown on the one guy. Yeah. Freshly motivated, bro. You can't tell me it wasn't. <laughs> you can't tell me it wasn't. Yeah, he was like, "Get the smoke out of here." But we don't get this. 
you if you don't get this fucking chef out of, out of my face, bro. Yeah, that was you, uh, what cool. you that rate was it? Uh, probably uh, seven. Well, seven just just seven. because I like you, guys just, and them. Just all. a plain seven. Yeah, plain seven. Uh, I can't say anything. Like I, I'm thinking of like seems themselves and maybe in, even like how things play out if that makes sense if that makes sense but yeah the movie isn't bad by any stretch yeah I, I'm, I'm like i'm thinking of like the writing skip it, anything there I, I wasn't really thinking much about this movie after watching it yeah i don't think really any of us were we were kind of just like yeah we saw yeah. it we did see Moving it on. <laughs> Yeah, it really was a moving on thing. Yeah. And the end credits were like, nothing, really. God, I felt so good. you going to see in the movie. For it. Like, they could have just been a scene in the movie. They could have just made that the ending of the movie. I don't understand why yeah, they make that an ending. I agree. Scene. Especially since the ending was like really, pretty jarring. Yeah. Is it just, just ends? the ending. It just ends. It just, it just ends. Yeah. And it doesn't give us like. Anything for season two of Yusuke Kaisen, like Demon Slayer does. It doesn't so lead like in, it, the end credit scene leads you into a possible story thread, but the movie itself, if you don't stay for the credits, does nothing to uh, make you feel like you're ready for season two. Yeah, which which what I, I am ready for season two. I am. I am very excited for season two of Yusuke Kaisen. I just. What like if I, if I wasn't excited for Jujutsu Kaisen season two already, this movie did nothing to make me more excited. Yeah, um, which I should give my score. I'm right there with you. It's a seven out of ten. Yeah, like yeah, it's a very plain seven out of ten. I, yeah, I can't say there's anything particularly bad about the writing or, despite how much I do not like Yuta as a protagonist, I, you know, he worked for the story. I enjoyed this other character. He's serviceable. I enjoy the other characters more than him. That's um, that's your anime. That's your anime thing by the looks of it. Yeah, <laughs> Enjoying no, I, I enjoy, characters more than the main characters. characters more than protagonists. But Jujutsu Kaisen is a different case where I love the protagonist just as much as the rest of the characters. Nice. Um, Chainsaw Man just just as well that Mappa's doing. Um, I love Denji just as much as I love like Power. Oh, it's never gonna come out. It's taking so fucking long. It's taking so long. But yeah, Jujutsu uh, Kaisen. If you're a fan of the series, absolutely watch it. Yeah, go ahead, watch it. Yeah, yeah like absolutely. But if on time, regardless. If you're wanting to see a genuinely really good anime movie, you're off, better off watching something else. Yes, there. Sure. Well, that takes us to the next film, which oh shit, uh, Morbius Sweep. That's all you, buddy. It sure is all me, and uh, oh boy, it is a doozy because this movie. Good, right? Yeah, I heard it was really good. Um, you know, um, basically better, better than Dark, the Dark Knight. Uh, better than No right, Way Home. Right, right, right. Yeah, better than No Way yeah. Home. Um, mm -hmm. no, this movie's bad. Um, I hate to beat around the bush, but you expect it to be good. Just you know. No, why did they make it? <laughs> Who of all characters did Sony? Why did they pick Morbius? Craven was right there. I don't know. You own him. They're making a Craven movie. Uh, should have made it before. Actually, I, I don't. Uh, no, never. Don't make it. Don't make it. Don't make it. Don't make it. Don't make the Craven movie. <laughs> don't make the Craven movie. They're making it. It's filming do right it. now with Aaron Taylor Johnson. Okay. You're gonna fuck it up as Craven. They probably will fuck it up. Yeah, Morbius is a not even like painful movie. It's just like it's just so nothing. I mean, it has a lot of just like egregiously bad shit. Like it's editing and it's like sound design and the amount of ADR. Holy shit. Like right out the gate, I knew there was something wrong when uh, Morbius is in his like office and his assistant walks in and she um pronounces the Nobel Prize wrong. 
by saying she says the noble prize <laughs> and then she goes noble team. Well, michael i know about your secret and presses a button and then a glass thing opens to reveal a bunch of bats flying in a circle a circle cylindrical thing and michael's like oh don't press oh that's just i that's just my secret thing i'm doing like what Jared leto's room Jared leto's room full of bats bro and like Jared Leto, let's let's talk about the man for a second because he's crazy. He's a crazy actor. It's funny because I hesitate to say he's a bad actor. He's not because he's not. I think he he does some really good stuff, despite how much I do not like him. He was great in Psycho, American Psycho. Yeah. Hey, Paul. He didn't look like Jared Leto at that time. That's weird. I've heard he's really good in Requiem for a Dream. I've never seen it. Never mind. But in this movie, he is simultaneously underacting and overacting at the same time. Like he's... It's weird. Jared Leto... Sorry for talking to you. No, no, no. But Jared Leto does look like someone who could play Morbius. Like, he's he not... He's like a vampire. Yeah. Like, it's a pretty, I guess, comic book accurate <laughs> casting. No, it's the perfect <laughs> casting for that character. Yeah. Too bad this movie was so poorly written. And it's not even like it's, like, poorly directed. It's just put together. It looked like it was made so easily, you know? Like, they just kind of filmed what they had and did it. But it's funny because there's apparently a lot of deleted scenes in this movie. And this movie was like an hour and a half. That's like Venom, right? Venom had a lot of deleted scenes, right? No. No? Nope. Venom was basically what you saw was what you got. If you watch the trailers from Morbius, there's at least half of that trailer that's not in the movie. <laughs> like, yeah. I went back and watched, like, the teaser trailer for this movie from 2020. And, like, a lot of that trailer isn't in the movie. God, missing, turned to smithereens and ashes. Like, I was just... Yeah, uh, the CGI is pretty bad. Um, Morbius's design, like as a creature, it feels like Jared Leto was there, and then suddenly Jared Leto was gone because he looks nothing like Jared Leto. The villain of this, the conflict of the movie, is uh, Morbius and his best friend are having a gay squabble. Oh, nice. About how he should just accept that he's a vampire and I'm not try so to be a good fuck. person. The gay squabble. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, it's his best friend Milo was like, he needs to accept that he's a vampire. He needs, to know, he needs to know what he's doing. I don't and, know why he's like, and Morbius is like, you're a monster. You're killing people. What is wrong with you? I, I feel like I can Morbius, and I'm why like, can't you? It's like, I would love to someday, if you want to, we can do like a full section on this and completely break down this disaster. Mm. Because it is really bad, but this would also make a great uh, drunk movie night. That's all I'm saying. Beer and pizza night. Beer and pizza night, bro. Is one more year for me. Uh, This is a great, this would probably make a great beer and pizza movie. Just to get absolutely trashed and watch this movie and not know what we're looking at. Yeah, boy. Um. Yeah, like I really don't even have much to say because there's like it's this, this movie is nothing. Like I'm struggling to come up with words of to what to describe about it. It's. Uh. Is it better? No, it's worse than Venom, right? <laughs> uh, it's about the same. Actually, oh, about the same. It's about the same quality wise, but I would watch I would watch Venom a million times before I watch Morbius again. Like just plainly. I really don't know what else to say. <laughs> if you have any other questions, ask away. I'm struggling here, um, buddy. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like I, I've never been passionate about the fucking Morbius movie. I mean, there's some cool effects, I guess. Like, the way they show his echolocation, I thought was pretty cool. 
Right. Uh, it's short. It's an hour and a half. That's good. It's not miserable. And it blew by. Dang. I wasn't bored, I guess. But I was just more like, oh, okay. There's some, oh, I, 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 there is some horrible dialogue. Like, there's a scene where Morbius gets arrested. And as the entire movie, he's timing himself uh, for how long it takes him before, like, the vampire starts to come out and he needs to feed on blood. So yeah. he's he's kind of getting feisty. And he's in the, the, the prison getting interrogated. And he goes, I'm starting to get hungry. And you won't like it when I'm hungry. And then he goes, oh, oh my God, it's a whole reference, bro. And then he didn't flashes, get the whole and he flashes like the vampire at them and there's also some occasional moments where there's like this horrible cg effect where like he like has a hiccup with the vampire coming out he kind of like takes like a swig of blood and then just kind of goes yeah. and then like goes, yeah. 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 the ah. vampire comes out and i was like oh, what is this movie ah uh, look I'm, I'm evil so can, can you tell um Arr. And it clear it's clear that a lot of people have just decide collectively decided to not watch this because while it did a decent opening weekend, it had the second lowest drop for any comic book movie ever in its second weekend. That's behind what? Steel. Who? What? what? The Shaquille O'Neal DC movie Steel. Steel. Yeah. Well, I've never seen Steel. It's funny. You should watch it. I bet I might. It's a great time. Um, What's the yeah. steel better than the <laughs> yes. uh, it's more, oh. it's more fun to watch, but it's not better. Morbius has some legitimately okay things about it. You tried, I I'm guess. I, did they try? I'm, did they try, though? No. No. Um, there's some music in the movie that's just straight up from Batman Begins, and I will not let anyone tell me otherwise. Specifically Batman Begins? Specifically Batman Begins. I see. Um, there's even some shots that are just straight up from Batman Begins, and I do not care. I've seen a lot of movies recently that have just shots from the trilogy. Yeah. Um, yeah, Venom was just more fun. So, would you call it? Would you call it a no time to die moment? Kinda, except it's not by the same composer, so I no, guess not. It's not. So it's it's just blatant stealing. Uh, who's the composer for this? John X or Joe X Strand. What the fuck is that? Great question. I don't know. He's worked question. with this director before. And this director is who again? Daniel he told me before. He did the movie Life, which I thought was a perfectly okay alien ripoff. Um, has much better acting in CGI than this. Oh, nice! It's just written better. It's very, very nice, honey. It's quite the low bar. That Morbius is. Um. Yeah. Oh God, I'm. I'm blanks. Yeah, it's the movie's just completely uninspired. It. As much as it's, it's probably better than those like early 2000s comic book movies, it fits right in with them. Wow. You know what I mean? I suppose so. It's, yeah, it's it's not much of a... Yeah. Yeah. It's not much of a movie, but to give it a score, I'd, um, I'd, I'd give it the same score I gave the first Venom, which is a 3 out of, a t- three out of 10. Ooh. I, I think they are on par with each other, which is how bad they are. <laughs> I'd watch Venom again over this, though. Because Venom was Morbius, was a more, Morbius is a more miserable time, I guess. Not even, like, miserable. It's just not fun. Like, it, there's nothing enjoyable about it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to... I, I watched this, watch this entire movie straight-faced. <laughs> like, not once did I, like, crack a smile or... I'd have raised my eyebrow. I just kind of watched it, just blankly staring at the screen, while three other people were alone watching it, just like me. I don't want to be here anymore. They said as they watched the movie. This is the second movie I've ever seen by myself in a theater. 
Oh, oh yeah, you saw by yourself. I forgot. Yeah. Uh, Spider-Man Far From Home being the first movie I ever saw by myself in the theater. Wow. Leave it up to Spider-Man movies for me to see them. Why don't you, why'd you, why'd you go see it? I'm, I'm like... Morbius? Yeah. I had a free day, and I was like, you know what? Someone has to watch it. What else was out that day? Hmm? What else was out, was out that day? Or like that uh, month or whatever? I think I could have gone and seen like The Lost City. And the hell? I remember when I was sitting in my car, because they started at the same time, they had the same showtime. I was like, I could just go watch The Lost City right now. Ah, good idea, huh? And then I said, nah, I'm going to go see Morbius. And so I saw Morbius. You're acting the fool, acting the fool. Yeah, it's a three out of a ten movie. I, I really have nothing else to add there. If you have any other questions, ask them now before I move the fuck on. Uh, I think we can move on. Cool. So that takes us into Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I told you too. Oh my god. Which is a movie I, I like a lot. Hey. I like it. Hey, no shame in no I, shame in that, I have okay. No ta- I have no shame. No shame whatsoever. Sonic was a great time. Um it's Good everything time, no. you I it, right. it is everything you would want in a sequel. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it takes what the first movie had, which I guess I should explain myself. I didn't like the first Sonic movie. I had a good time. I don't think it's a good movie. They're going to murder you for that, bro. They're going to murder you for that. I do not care. Do it. Kill me. Because I think it's just a bad movie. But I enjoyed it. I had a good time. You know? I think I would have been completely miserable if I saw it by myself. Yeah. But I saw it with a big group of friends. We had a great time. Sonic 2. I don't think I would be miserable if I saw this on my own. This movie's a lot of fun. Like, it's genuinely hilarious. Like, actually, like, there's a joke with, without spoiling, there is a joke with a fish that actually, like, cracked my ass. Like, I was loud, like, loudly laughing. And there's some there's just some really great bits of humor and the characters are like they gave the like the human characters are very much like a big part of the first movie this movie they're basically they're still there um but they give them more to do like they give them a kind of like they give them something to do that's away from sonic so that sonic can have his adventure um but they also have their own little side plot that does take away from the movie and kind of there's like about 15 tw- about 10 to 15 minutes of this movie that don't even have Sonic in it because they focus on the human characters. And while that stuff was really dumb, it gave me some of the best jokes in the movie. Neato. Jim Carrey, again, operating on 100. Like, he, he makes the movie more watchable. Like, was it with the first movie? He, with the first movie, he hard carried it. Like that, he his back must have been hurting after carrying that movie so hard. But in this movie, he doesn't have to do that. He doesn't have to carry it because there's a lot more. He carried it so on. hard, he might he goes to retiring. Yeah, he carried it so hard he retired. But if this is his last performance in a movie, what a way to go! Uh, because this is just prime '90s Jim Carrey. Like if you love that era of his work. You're going to love him in this movie. And I'm going to stop dodging Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails. Sonic probably needed to shut up a little bit early on. Like he was talking a well, little that, too much. Yeah, that's, that's Sonic like right that's there. Sonic, yeah. right? Like, so I, I, like, as much as it kind of annoyed me how much he was talking, that's Sonic. Like, that's who he is. And they established that in the first movie. So what am I complaining about, right? <laughs> Right, but Knuckles. Well, Tails is Tails is great. I like Tails, but also because I just like Tails, and I like uh, that they got Colleen O'Shaughnessy to do Tails the voice. Is my Tails um, is my favorite. Yeah, Tails, and she uh, plays Tails in the games and in the cartoons, and she once again does a great job as Tails. She knows this character by the palm of her hand. She's got it. Did, 
Didn't lose a touch. Didn't lose her touch. The character's a lot of fun, and he's really sweet. Knuckles. Holy Here shit. I come, was... rather than the best of them. The rest of them. Da -da 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 -da. They call me Knuckles. I like Sonic. I don't chuckle. Not only I've had rest my muscles. <laughs> Not only did Idris Elba, like, do a great job as in the voice, Knuckles was badass. Like, he meant business. Hmm. Like, every time he's on screen with Sonic, he's just beating the shit out of Sonic. He's either monologuing or cracking him one. Um, and you know what? He he was funny too. Like they kind of play him like Drax, where like he doesn't really know what like fun is and like metaphors and jokes, so he takes everything super literally. But you know, yeah. that starts becoming the joke, and they make some great bits out of that. There's a great bit of him looking at a uh, typo or like a typing, where he's just going dot 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 dot. Shadow can be a really good comedic character. I just not when he's like really retarded. Yeah. I like Sonic Boom. I mean, it was, I like Sonic Boom. I like him in it. It's you say funny as fuck. Or but, Knuckles? but I, well, if a Shadow, I if I said Shadow, I meant Knuckles. Yeah. I, I Knuckles love, can be funny. I love Knuckles and Sonic Boom. I think he's hilarious. Yeah, he's funny, but maybe a little too much. Maybe like, too much, but I'm okay with it. I think he's I think he's hilarious. He has some great jokes in that show. Yeah. Um, but Knuckles in this movie is is fucking hilarious. Almost everything he said was gold. Um, and I, you know, I guess if you want to talk about action, the action's pretty good in this too. Like, there's a fight with Sonic and Knuckles towards the end of the second act. That was like pretty fucking badass. Huh. Like, there's a shot of them clashing, and then immediately Sonic just like throws like six punches at him to his face. <laughs> Like they do, like the like in the trailer, you see them kind of like clash at each other. The, they what they don't show you is the next shot is him giving uh, Knuckles like a six piece, <laughs> um, and I had a I had a great time. The theater was completely packed. We had to sit in the front. Wow, lots of kids, lots of Sonic fans, lots of grown men, but lots of families, <laughs> and. We all had a great time. As for, you know, criticisms, uh, the movie's pretty fucking dumb. Like, when you look at it, it's plot, like, and what kind of happens, it's pretty fucking dumb. But it has a lot of heart, and there's actually a pretty uh, nice message about, you know, uh, living up to your responsibility and learning to mature. Because like the the, I, the crux of the movie is that Sonic is still a kid, so he acts you know irresponsibly. So the movie's about him learning that he needs to start taking think you know becoming more responsible and taking accountability for what he does. And I thought that was really cool. You know, they full on Spider Man him, <laughs> which that's actually a pretty valid comparison. I think Sonic is basically Spider Man. In, in the movies, like he spends a lot of it when he's in when he's fighting, he's just talking shit. Like that's yeah. all he does. He just talks shit, which is fine. He's Sonic. He should. Too bad I'm gonna beat your ass, boy. Yeah, too bad. We're no, talking all that right shit right around the corner to beat his ass. I hear you, talk, I hear you was, I hear you was talking shit. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I feel like I'm hyping this up a little too much because it is it is a good movie, but it, it has problems. You know, it is it's a dumb fucking kids movie, and not every Sonic joke lands. Movie. For every really funny joke, there's an equally really unfunny joke. And yeah, there's a lot a big stretch of this movie that doesn't have Sonic in it at all, and it's pretty bad. But it has a lot of really great jokes, and there's a twist in the movie that was just fucking stupid. The twist? It's a twist uh, in the oh. movie. It was dumb. But this movie gave me stuff that I never thought I'd see because I just wouldn't think we'd get a Sonic movie that would get a sequel so that we could see this stuff. And thank God for that redesign. I'm just going to say thank that God again. Thank God for that redesign. I just, just want to say that again. Thank God for the redesign. 
because I am terrified as to what if Knuckles and Tails would have looked like. But oh boy, um, yeah, this movie's a seven out of ten. Nice, good movie. Is it great? Fuck no. <laughs> but I had a great time. <laughs> so yeah, this is maybe the movie I had the most fun with out of all of these. Nice. Which is almost sad. But yeah. Moving on to the next movie would be Ambulance. Oh my god. I just uh, love Michael Bay. Listen, he when he was talk, watching it, he was DMing me like every, every yeah, scene that I fucking was li- happened. I was live DMing <laughs> you everything that was going on. So you basically know everything about this movie. Basically, so you can talk about it too. <laughs> and I sent you a Hi clip. Now. I see you could send. I sent you a clip that was hilarious. Funny as fuck. I also showed us Sebastian that clip, and he died laughing too. <laughs> so stupid. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, where do I start? Um, this movie's pretty bad. Mm. It is not as bad as Six Underground. Ooh, I never saw that one, so what do I know? <laughs> you missed out. That movie's awful. Uh, yeah. Uh, this movie's two and a half hours of um, drone shots and car chases that aren't at all exciting. Um, they just not keep... exciting car chases in a Michael Bay movie, huh? How about that? It's just continuous escalation with continuous, ridiculously stupid moment that does not need to be there. And awful comedy. Like, I know he's known for his incredibly weird and awkward and out-of-place comedy. This movie, like, went above and beyond that. Like, there's, that a, joke. Like, there's a joke with Jake Gyllenhaal. He's trying to, like, figure out how to use a defibrillator, and he yells, It looks like fucking Donkey Kong on here. Uh, huh? And there's a scene where, uh, it's a scene where um uh Yahya Abdul Mateen and uh Jake Gyllenhaal well Jake Gyllenhaal has to put on his AirPods trademark to listen to music to calm him down, but his uh, Yaya who's playing his brother says, Yo yeah, give me one of those and so they listen to music together while in a car chase on AirPods. Uh, trademark is that, is that are, they, are they fucking copying baby driver huh are they copying baby driver you know how he I needs music know. to like that'd be funny because isaac gonzalez in, is in this movie he was also in baby driver oh how about that uh, isaac gonzalez is just the token hot michael bay girl hey girl she's hot i'm not gonna say i'm not disagreeing but she's a better you actress know, she, than being in this she, movie she can be my Michael Bay girl, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> she, she's also a talented actress. Mm, yeah. Who can do a lot. And I really would like to stop seeing her in really dumb movies. Please. Wait, she listen to Baby Driver. What well, other movies have you seen from her in? Godzilla vs. Kong. Oh my Baby gosh, she was saying that every day. Hobbs and Shaw. Hey, Hobbs and Shaw is also, fucking great. Right. I like Hobbs and Shaw. Is it a dumb <laughs> movie? <laughs> Absolutely. She had a hot shot. I don't remember. For like five minutes. She even said in an interview, I was like, I don't even know why. I was in there for like two minutes. Like, <laughs> Now you know. Um, I guess. God. Like, none of the acting is like bad in this movie. It's just everything else. Like, literally everything else about this. Oh my God, the drones. Yeah, drone shots. I'm gonna joke about Michael Bay getting a like a birthday, like yeah. a drone as a birthday gift, and he's no, just using it now. That's like what it was like, baby's first drone. <laughs> like he wants everybody to know that he got one. Oh, what's a drone? Oh my god! Here's a shot of Jake Gyllenhaal walking up to a door, and it is a elevated drone shot that's moving super fast as Jake Gyllenhaal is walking to a door. There's also a random shot of. Okay, so there's two separate shots of a cop lying on the ground bleeding, and it is the same kind of shot of a drone sweeping from left 
to right in a circle, swirling around this cop who's bleeding out on the ground. Listen, you got a drone. The him uses a drone. Yes. <laughs> you get. You gotta watch this movie, man. Oh my god. You gotta watch this movie. Like this would. Um, I... This is a movie that like we need to watch together and just like laugh at it for how bad it is. I feel like I feel like I got a straight to Peacock release. I'll see if this movie should have probably went straight to Peacock or to Netflix. Like this didn't need to go to the theater. This movie was cheap too. It only cost forty million dollars. Oh wow! That's is that the cheapest film? Um, maybe not. He's made cheap movies. Like, this is his cheapest in a while. Like, the island? Shit, maybe. Which, also, if we want to talk about history of Michael Bay shitting on his own movies, he also shat on the island. He didn't like mm. the island, even though it's probably one of his better movies. Is it really? Is it really? Huh? Is it really? It probably is. I've never seen it, so I don't fucking know, but... Yeah. I don't know. Wouldn't that be nuts? Um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say. This movie's really bad. Like, the I'm, fun time, at I'm least. Uh, it's really fucking boring. It, it's two and a half hours, and boring. every so often I was like, I'm only, I was like, I got to, like, because this movie moves really fast at the start. Like, they get to the bank heist really quickly. Oh. And then the rest of the, like, that's like the first 10, 15 minutes is the bank heist. From that point on, for the next two hours, you are just watching a car chase. And I would never describe a Michael Bay movie as, as boring. That's, got, that's something right there. Well, because it's just repetitive. The movie just yeah. keeps doing the same thing over and over with occasionally upping the ante. Occasionally, <laughs> right? It, it, I don't know. I don't know, man. Maybe you'll like this more than I did, but I did. This was I... really fucking bad. <laughs> It's a 3.5 out of a 10 for me. 3.5 out of a 10? Oh my god. Because the acting is good. It's a good looking movie. Uh, that's it. <laughs> that's it. It's not as bad as Six Underground. Six Underground is just egregiously bad. Oh, I'm really nasty. I looked at her and I was like, this, I'm one of you. I'm fucking one of you. I'm like, why? I'm like, Okay. Sorry about that. I don't even remember where I was. Uh, this movie's uh, not as bad as... Bad. Yeah, it's not as better bad. acting, I guess. It's not as bad as Six Underground. It has good acting. Um, oh, you're so stuck on my bed! Yeah, that's really it. I have nothing else to say. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, yeah, moving on. <laughs> I think this is the last movie we're talking about today. Everything, okay. everywhere, all at once. Ah, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh. Uh, which we just um, saw today. We did. Let's get you today. So, on 420. Yeah, on 420. How, how, uh, how, fitting. how accurate. How, how appropriate. It's in it's the poetry. It rhymes. Right. Yeah. Well, I don't really know where to start with this one. Um. Well, let's talk about, I want to, I'm going to talk about my experience, like, a little bit. Um, Go for it. With, with it a little bit, like, let's just say, I've never heard of this movie until, like, last month. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, when I heard about it, it was like, wow, that's a lot of reviews. Too bad, I don't care. And I didn't. I really didn't. Um, And the people kept talking about it. And I'm like, oh, my God. So far, it, the scores are still up. It's not even out yet. And then it came out, and they were still up. And now everybody was fucking raving about it. And I still couldn't feel any more apathetic about it. You know, it's one of those movies where it's an A24 film. Mm -hmm. like, you know? So, you know, everyone was giving it the, uh, giving it the big suck. And I'm like, I'm so indifferent with, th with this thing. And then we had a friend who saw it. Yeah. I still didn't feel anything about what he said. Like, I'm still very indifferent. I don't, I don't, I don't really care. And then you said, "Hey, want to watch it?" And I thought, "Oh, why not?" <laughs> and then we went to the theater. 
it was impossible. There were like two people. Two there were, other people just, yeah, in the like theater. like just, just two other girls, probably. <laughs> I don't know. In the same in the same situation as us. Yeah. They were laughing way more than we were. Oh my god, were they? Yeah. Which is you know fine. When when you know when they when they left, they were like that was so fucking weird, and you know we were basically yeah, in the same boat. Literally, we didn't say a word to each other as it left, but they walked past us and they went. That is the weirdest fucking shit I've ever seen. And I was like, yeah, we're right there with you. <laughs> right there with you. Right there with you, girl. Right there with you. Um, and, and then, yeah, we, well, we, well, we went in there, sat down. Um, it has, it, the weirdness doesn't start, doesn't start a little later. But boy, did they really build it up. They really, yeah, they, they Really made me wonder why the why is everybody raving up with this movie? It wasn't like bored or anything or taken out of it. I, I was pretty invested in what was going on mm-hmm. in the beginning, and then they got into why it is what it is. And let me tell you, everything, everywhere, all at once. It's one of the best movies I've seen all year. No joke. No sarcasm. It is. It just is. It is a treat. It is without a doubt one of the most unique, strangest, confident films I've ever seen in my entire life. It is an experience being a film that is both clever and fun and like complex at the same time. It both takes. Maybe a little overly complex, I think. A little overly complex. The movie takes itself seriously, but it also doesn't. Now, that could be an issue one way or another, but I myself, like the film, was jumping between emotions up and down all the time. I wasn't taken out of it. Mm-hmm. Maybe I could have done without a joke being thrown in at a few serious scenes, but when there were very serious scenes... They kept they they controlled themselves from the craziness, and it even tugged Most, at my heartstrings. Mostly, yeah. And but you know the one that matters, you know which I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. It even it even tugged at my heartstrings because of how real it felt in a movie that gives out so many nonsensical, batshit insane ideas. Yeah, batshit insane ideas. The scene, the very specific scene that I'm talking about felt so real and it yeah. hit me home that's what the movie's about I it there that's what it, it is a about. yeah it's a good payoff for what they built up to with, with, with this whole concept mm-hmm. it's a message tight tied neatly into how do we how, how genre are we going to describe this movie because i don't know this is probably a film of this this is probably a once in a, a lifetime film. It's an A twenty four movie. That's that's the genre. But it's I don't want it. It's an A twenty four movie. It's a good A twenty four film, but I enjoyed it. I had a fun time with it. I understood. Something's you going on here. Artist? Us. That is A twenty four. Oh my god, it I didn't know that. Oh well, I like I like that one. That was I like, good. I like some A twenty four movies, but just like when they do like weird shit. Green Knight. Oh God, the Green Knight. The thing we don't hate the Green Knight. No, we're, we're no, just... no, 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 no. Far from it. I think I think we're conditioned to how pretentious of a film it is. Yeah. Which, by the way, not a bad. Movie. I totally, I totally feel like everything, everywhere, all it was is a little pretentious. Oh, absolutely. But... Yeah, but not to levels of insulting. Like, how you're a dumb audience. No, Think, yeah, uh, you don't, you don't get it. It's not preaching to you. It's, it's. Yeah. It's like. We're pretentious in the sense that we have the balls to put certain objects in people's hands <laughs> and just and you roll will with laugh. It. And just roll with and it. And you will like it. Just roll and with it. And you will like you but you might even like it. Go to chance. Comparison. This is from uh, uh, yes. uh, the directors of these movies are just called by Daniel they're just called Daniels. A new D D, bro. Um and they directed a movie called Swiss Army Man. Which is notoriously fucking weird. 
not uh, everybody uh, likes it. It's uh, actually quite a divisive movie. Is it? Everything Everywhere All at Once seems to not be that so far. But no, definitely everyone's... Will, you'll, you'll see people come out of the woodworks on this one, I think. You might. I haven't seen anything yet, so... I, I've seen some negative reviews, but... Yeah. All right, double toasted. Yeah, double toasted. But... I, I, I'm going to have to see the review, because, yeah. you know... Uh, they mostly talked about just the general... Like, the They felt the movie was repetitive, which... To be entirely that's fair. honest, that is fair. The movie yeah. does repeat itself quite a bit. Uh, for a movie that's over two hours, nearly two and a half hours, I think, yeah, something could be true. Like, I didn't necessarily feel the two hours. I just think, yeah, you probably could have trimmed the fat somewhere here. Yeah, It didn't need to be this long. So I remember when I heard that it was like nearly two and a half hours, I went, like, I was like scared. Because recently we've had a string of movies where they are way too long and feel way too long. Yeah, it's this is the, I guess the two the two years of long movies, twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two. Movies that really don't need to be as long as they are. Yeah. Now, I will make this clear once again. I do not mind long movies. Nope. I like long it's movies. Some of our favorite, favorite films are... of all time is Return of the King. All right, I oh, like long movies. I'm just, I'm just gonna say, oh, Lord of the Rings is just, it's basically just two hours, so that's my favorite film of all time. It's just two hours of that, so you know, there you go. <laughs> but you know, when they need to yeah. be that long, they can't. They are allowed to be. But there's also a difference between needing to be that long and feeling that long. Lord of the Rings doesn't feel long. Lord of the Rings doesn't feel long. And it, but it also needs to be long. If yeah. it needed to be long, but felt incredibly long, then there's a problem. It's really perfect. There you go. Everything, everywhere, all at once didn't need to be this long, but didn't feel this long. I don't know what I would cut. Honestly, I don't. I don't know what I would cut either. Um, because I, I, you know, most of their, a lot of their scenes that we were, that you know, were, were, were written up, I made a point, mm. or we're trying to make a point. So I just, you know what I mean? Uh, hot dog hands, bro. Hot dog hands. <laughs> nope, I will refuse to give context. Uh, no, 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 none at all. This is the refuse to give any context movie. Oh, you won't get any. Because you're not getting any. Fuck you. Like, even the movie just doesn't give you context to shit sometimes. They're just like, here, have this. I'm like, <laughs> what? Like, I think there was a point in the movie where you visibly saw me lose... Where you you visibly saw the movie leave me me uh God what am I trying to say? You visibly saw the movie lose me for mm. a minute. Like what are we on about? Like what is going like? Because the movie starts pretty tame, honestly, for like the first like yeah thirty to forty minutes, maybe. I would call it tame based on like what Everything the movie else. <laughs> In the movie. It was based upon everything else because what I what I I really do like the the uh, opening like the first mm -hmm. 20, 10, 15 minutes like it's good shit. Yeah. Like you see, you learn about a lot about the characters, what's going on in their life, how they feel, mm -hmm. and in very subtle ways. You know, lots of details being shown too, mm -hmm. and they give you bl blueprints on what's gonna happen later on. A little bit, and the set offs, setups, and the payoffs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good shit. Yeah, because the movie starts out being this family drama that you don't really know mm -hmm. what's where it's going. Yeah, and then it culminates at the end. But what the the process of getting to that ending for me felt like a little too much at times. Mm -hmm. Like the joke, you know, like the, the phrase of like everything but the kitchen sink. This movie was everything and the kitchen sink. Yeah. Which I know, I under, I know and acknowledge that for some people, and I assume you, that wasn't a problem. For me, it definitely felt a little distracting and kind of like I was into it. It never took me out, but I was definitely like, 
okay, this is getting a little crazy. Let's try to chill for a little bit. Loud, loud. Um, but I, I could just be in the minority there, I guess. Uh, who really knows? Who really knows, right? But you were saying. Uh, was I saying something? I think you were. Anyway, uh, we, we could get to another point. Uh, can we talk about the acting? Yes. Really good. Of course we can. <laughs> it's really fucking good. Uh, Michelle Yeoh. <laughs> When, I don't think I've ever seen a movie, seen her in a movie or that I didn't like her in. Yeah. It's fucking great in this one. Oh, she's great. Everyone's great. Yeah. Especially uh, Ki, uh, Kei Hui Kwan, I believe that's his name. Oh, the returning man, you know? The like... returning man of retired for 30 years and now back. Uh, yeah. once what, a, known what a return. A short round from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. He was also in The Goonies. Hey. And he retired for about 30 years. And now he's back. And holy shit. What a way to come back. He's, a, he's yeah, great. He's back. he's back when it's cool. How about that? And he's great. In he's back when it's cool to be Asian. <laughs> Jesus. That is one way of saying it. Yeah, he he was great in this. Mm -hmm. Everyone was, yeah. Jimmy Lee Curtis. <laughs> my oh my god, uh, I, I think she. I think this is like <laughs> the most fun she's ever had in the movie ever. <laughs> Maybe. She was a nice out. Yeah, or I'm she sure she had fun there. Well, she did. I can tell. Um, the actress that played uh, the daughter also did a great job. First time seeing her, I think for me. Uh, I probably saw her in something else, but I can't place it if I did. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, Not to say anything. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the action was good. Yeah? It was good. The visuals were insane. Uh, supposedly, the crew that worked on this, like CG wise, was only Say 11 again? people. Say again? Apparently, the crew that worked on this, I believe in specifically the VFX department, was only 11 people. Lying. I don't believe you. That's a lie. That's a filthy lie. What do you mean it's only 11 people? What do you mean it's only 11 people? Supposedly, it's only 11 people. Like, that worked on the VFX. So many people for fucking <laughs> for the effects. this movie for the visual effects. And there's a lot going on in this movie. Um, Man, this, this movie you kind of have to like be on board with the whole like multiverse concept. Yeah. Uh, because if you're not, if you think that's absolutely silly. And if you don't think any of that makes any sense, maybe stop watching the movie. <laughs> well, you can. I mean, you know, make your money's worth. You know, because yeah. you're you're in theater. <laughs> or if you watch it on Netflix eventually, you think it'll go on Netflix soon? Uh, not soon, but it'll go to Netflix eventually, probably. If anything, if not, it'll go to Prime. Yeah, but because it's a twenty four, I assume it'll go to like or something. It's totally fun to put it on Netflix by the looks of it. I don't know. I mean, if I would have saw this on Netflix... I, I mean, been... better to see it in theaters. You it know? works really well in the theater due to the whole yeah. aspect ratio thing that they do throughout the movie. Because the movie starts in like a 4 by 9 and then it stretches out to widescreen um, like the normal like sixteen by nine, I believe. It was a it, it was a good throwback to like older style of martial arts films. Yeah. Um, there was some great uh, there was some pretty good com comedy. The movie was funny at times when it needed to be, and also when probably it didn't, when it probably wanted to be incredibly serious, I couldn't help but kind of laugh. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of struck like I. I don't really know what to say about this because, like, it's good. Very good film. 
it's good. I like it. It made me cry, which is something I forgot to mention until now. I heard the sniffles and I thought, and it's really, really? And then you oh, oh, wow. Over and you caught me wiping tears from my eyes. Mm hmm. And then I just flipped you off. Yeah, you twice. <laughs> For three times, I think. I was like, I know this Not bitch. True. I was like, I know this bitch who cried in Demon Slayer 8 looking at me now. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, because that's because someone died. See, I cried. I cried over stupid things. I cried when family emotion happened. Ah, uh, ah, uh, so relatable. Ah, it's you, Oni Chan. Yeah, I'll. Uh, I would like to see the movie again. Yeah, I, uh, I would also like to see it again. Maybe not in a, maybe not in theaters. Yeah, because it's a. Uh, you gotta sit through it, you know? Yeah. I, that's the thing. Like, maybe... Because I remember at one point in the movie... Because the movie's, like, divided into chapters because of course it is. And when If you couldn't get any more pretentious, or you're just... if you couldn't get any more pretentious. Green Knight was this... chapters, right? Hmm? Green Knight has chapters, right? Green Knight has chapters too, right? Probably. Yeah, I probably did. Um, when they got to chapter two in this movie... I looked at my watch and went, oh shit, we're oh, only no. an hour in. And I was like, oh, we still have another hour left. Like, what can possibly happen? Turns out a lot. What? Don't ask silly questions, boy. Also, I don't know why we kind of stayed a little bit in the credits as if something was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, we, I don't know why. The Marvel movie conditioning. Let's go. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't know if you still got any more in you. I think I'm kind of pretty sad. I like the movie quite a bit. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I, I think yeah, the edition was fucking nuts. I think it's quite silly at times, but that yeah. is probably intentional. Also, I guess I kind of did notice the uh, the stunts, stunt actors, and martial artists like having to stay back for their cue mm -hmm. when they could have like attacked. But it's taking me out of it too much, like snake eyes. <laughs> but no, no, the action was pretty solid overall. Very creative too. Yeah. And when I say creative, hey, mean creative. Of, the amount of shit they make Michelle Yo do. Yeah. Oh my god. How much? She's like, how how much must I do of this? And he's like, uh, as much as you want. Okay, Tiva, I do so all I of it. I don't know why they made her put on like a weird axe. I know they. Try to. They made her put on an accent for the movie, which she doesn't really have. Is that her real? No. No, that's not her real accent. She doesn't talk like stereotypical Chinese woman. Mm. Um. She kind of talks more like British, I guess. I've never heard her talk in her you movies. Saw, you saw any, any other way, right? She talks Asian. She got a. Yeah, it's kind of more like a, but it wasn't like, like in this movie, she's literally like doing like the, the stereotypical, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, I mean, but she's it was the great. only one doing it. Like no one else in the movie is doing it, but her. <laughs> no one else in the movie is doing it. Are you sure? Because it's the dad, her husband. That's just his normal accent. No, but so it's like fitting. Yeah, I mean, it's I guess, but. Like, that's just him. That's just how he talks. So it, it didn't, like, take me out of it. But I was like, I know you don't talk like that, man. Anyway, that's just a hey. me thing. Um, Immersion. Immersion. Score. Yeah, I have not settled on a score for this, by the way. I want to see it again. But I, I'm gonna, I, I don't mind scoring it right now. Sure. What would you give it? Uh, I might just give it a 9. To be safe. I think I like it more. Then a nine, but a nine for now. Hmm. Yeah, I don't really know what to to give it. I'm probably around that area because I'm I am conflicted because it did make me cry. Yeah. So there's a part of that that's like I want to give it a nine, but I also don't. Yeah. I think if you're watching it again, you could probably find a lot of stuff about it that just like doesn't work. You could. Or that's just so silly, it kind of takes you out. Maybe watching with a very well, different audience. Maybe, maybe like since it went, it went, it went, 
it went in a fucking rapid fire pace. Yeah, it did. So it, maybe we probably missed stuff that they purposely. It's kind of like uh, nah. It's like go fast. Don't don't let don't, don't get time to think about it. But for all I know, it could be wrong How about that. Could be wrong. Could be wrong. Mm. Yeah, I think I'll. I think I'll. I'll. Uh, go with it and go the the nine out of ten. All right. Great film. Yeah, it was, it was good. I like a great film. Liked it quite a bit. And I think with that, that is the last film. Hey. So. How about that? Yeah, how about that? And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the early 22, 2022, oh my god, roundup. Just kind of catching up on the movies that we kind of no. missed talking about. God knows we probably will talk about Doctor Strange when that comes out. Because holy shit, that movie is going to be insane. Not crazy than this, I think. Maybe not. Yeah, no, probably not. After seeing this, there's no way Doctor Strange is crazier than this movie. No way, no chance in hell. No chance in hell. She no chance. Uh, yeah. That was fun. Yes. Yeah. After so long. 